Today, I'm going to show you how to make a hoop-handled charcuterie board. It's getting close to that holiday season and people want to make gifts and this is one I like to do, so I thought I would show how to do it. I think they're pretty neat. Not overly complicated, uh, but they're not quick. There is a lot of sanding involved, but I think what you get is worth the effort. This one is actually a commission. A friend of mine has a daughter getting married and he wanted a handmade gift for her. So that's what this is for. To start off, we need to pick the wood that we're gonna use. So for this one, I'm gonna use this hard maple that I have. Uh, it's four quarter, a little rough still, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you could go ahead and run it through the planer now, but for this particular one, since it's gonna be a glue up of a few different pieces of wood, I'm saving that for last. But now that I have my main wood picked, since I am gluing together two pieces and there is going to be a glue line, instead of trying to hide that, I'm going to emphasize that. So I need to go look for some contrasting woods that I can do a center strip with and then we can start cutting. I went through my lumber stack and I think these are what I'm going to go with. I've got some purple heart, some walnut. This walnut's already been jointed forever ago. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to put this side against the fence, run it through the table saw to clean up this edge, flip it, and then cut some strips out of this. This one has not been jointed, so I'm gonna run it over the jointer real quick, and then we'll cut some out of that. What I'm leaning towards right now is one strip of Purple Heart in the middle, flanked by two thin strips of Walnut, and then of course the maple on either side. So for the maple, it's 56 inches long. I've decided I want this charcuterie board to be about 24 inches, which 24, 24 is 48, and that would leave eight inches of this board left, but there's not really much I can do with that. So what I'm going to do is just cut it right in half, and yeah, that's gonna leave some overage top and bottom that'll end up being firewood, but the advantage to that is it does give me a little more wiggle room to move these boards back and forth to get whatever alignment I think is gonna look best. So we've got our strips cut. Let's take a look and see what we have to work with. So one of the things I like with this particular maple board is it's got some really nice figure, like it's nice and curly through here. I want to maintain as much of that as possible. What I'm leaning towards right now is something like that, I think. I know I do want this edge on the outside because this, this part's gotta be cut away anyway. I did end up with some burning on the Purple Heart, which you'll notice I didn't get on the maple. Um, you could just hit that with a, a block plane, but I think I'm actually gonna run that through the drum sander just uh, because I can and probably do the same with the walnut. I just I just want to make sure I can get as perfect of a glue line as I can. And these these are pretty decent. Once I got clamp pressure on it, that, that would close up real nice. I think that's what I'm gonna do. As is, we'll end up with just a hair over 14 and a half if I leave it at this full width. We're gonna run these through through the drum sander get it all glued up and then once the glue up is all done we're going to go through the drum sander again because this will be um let's see that will be just a little too big for my planer so we'll 
go through the the drum sander since the maple is a little thicker than both the walnut and the purple heart will do that to get them all down to the same thickness so the panel will just be flat all the way across we'll do both sides to the drum sander we've got our pieces all ready to go this is one thing i like to use parallel clamps for just because i feel like it makes it easier to lay this stuff out but really any kind of clamp is going to work so we've got five pieces that we're gluing together so I think it does pay to, to kind of look at it first and decide how you want to glue it. But what I'm going to do is pull these back and just leave this one as is. And then these three, I'm going to turn them on their side. And with these ones, the grain, the, like these are narrow enough and, and the grain is uh, uniform enough that I don't really care which side is up and which side is down. So which side you face up doesn't really matter, at least in this case. Now, depending on the grain of your wood, that might be a little different, but what I'm gonna do is just do a bead of glue on the three of these, and then on this face. And then we'll flip these up, and we'll start clamping. I do have another clamp ready to go, to go right in the middle. Type Bond 3 is my preferred glue for this, just because it's waterproof and food safe. Not that this type of stuff should ever end up in the water, but you can't guarantee people are going to follow directions, so why not? And you could take a glue brush or something and smooth that out, but with how smooth these faces are and the clamp pressure, how close it all is, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and start flipping them, and we'll get it clamped. And with these, it's not going to take a ridiculous amount of clamp pressure because the the glue surfaces are, are really well prepared and, and they line up really well, so it's not going to take a whole lot. What I'm looking for is just kind of a, an even, more or less, squeeze out along the joint. Clean that up. Let that sit. It's the next day and I've just pulled the panel out of the clamps and so far looks like we've got a pretty nice glue line. I'm gonna run this through the drum sander. Um, these center bits are a little proud on this side so I'm gonna go this side up through the drum sander until we get through this rough stuff and then I'm gonna flip it over get the other side. Uh, the other side is where the center strips are just below the surface. So then this side we're gonna have to go through, I don't know, looks a little more than a sixteenth all the way down to get to, it looks like the walnut is the thinnest by just a little bit. And we'll do that same thing there and see what's next. We are done with the drum sander. I am really happy with how this glue up turned out no gaps nice and clean so I think this is gonna turn out to be a pretty sweet board next we're gonna hit the table saw with a crosscut sled I'm gonna square up these ends there's a little bit of a crack here at the bottom so when I square it up I'm gonna make sure and, and come in just enough to cut that area out and a little bit past just so that hopefully we avoid any cracks in the future and I do need to shorten this up a little bit anyway. The edges are all squared up. Now we need to figure out what our design is going to be. For these types of boards, 
one of the things I like to do is to round off the corners. That's true of pretty much any charcuterie board I do. I do want to find the center point because the, the handle is going to be centered up here. Spin this around. Huh. We're right on the dot at 14 and a half, so let's find seven and a quarter. Okay. And for me, the handles are the outer diameter is usually three inches. Um, sometimes I go smaller, but for this one, that's what we're going to end up using. So let's find, let's come down an inch and a half. Okay, that should roughly be where we're drilling and, and cutting for the handle. For the rounded corners at the bottom, it's really just kind of a, I don't really go for a specific size necessarily, just whatever looks good. And so for this one, I think I'm gonna use this can of paint. I'm gonna guess that's about four to five inches. Four and a quarter is the diameter. And this is where kind of the creative part comes in, I think. So the, the handle will end up roughly something like that. And then usually I would have that come into a skinnier neck. And then that would transition back out to the full width of, of the board. Sometimes though, I like to follow the grain and, and give it a, a little bit more of an organic shape. But that's always kind of tricky. Kind of depends on, on whether you want it to be symmetrical or whether it's asymmetry that you're going for. I go back and forth just depending on the wood. Where we've got this dividing line down the center, I think it leans towards symmetry but at the same time we've got these kind of cool the grain tightens up here and we've got just this kind of shallow curve and we've got a little bit of that here too but there's also this really nice curl that i want to keep as much of that as i can I think that's what I'm gonna go with. If I don't like it, well, I can always make it narrower, I guess. And that's that's the tricky thing because I think a lot of it depends on what your end goal is. If it's one that you want somebody to be able to just throw in a drawer, then you have to take those dimensions into consideration. And this would be, lengthwise, it would probably end up a little too deep for most drawers. Width-wise, it's fine if you have a wide drawer. I like to, putting the handle on mine though, I kind of think they lend themselves towards hanging on a wall somewhere when they're not in use or standing up on a counter maybe. So I think I'm gonna go for it as is and we'll just see where we end up. To the bandsaw. <laughs> Thank you. 
at this point, the round over is, I don't know, like 80% of the way there. I will do at least one more pass with the bit a little bit further down. This board ended up three quarters of an inch thick, so I'm using a three eighths round over bit. But now we're gonna deal with the handle. And there's, there's a few steps to this. The first is we need to make a template that we're gonna use to, for a couple things. So we could actually get a little bit closer with the bandsaw, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a, a donut, I guess, and using that center point, we're going to actually screw it down, and then we're gonna use that with a, gotta find it, a bearing guided bit, and we're going to flush that up so that it, it matches all the way around. And then using that same center hole, we're gonna use a Forstner bit to drill all the way through. And then we'll use this same 3 8 bit we've been using once all of that work is done to round over the inside and the outside of the handle. For the template to cut the top of that handle, I've got a three inch hole saw. And you might be thinking, dude, you're gonna cut into your table. No, I'm not. I'm only gonna cut through about halfway, maybe three quarters and then I'm gonna flip it over. I find that makes it easier to not get the piece I'm actually wanting to save. Makes it easier to not get that stuck inside. And I know it's not exactly three inches because three inches is on the outside and we're going with what's on the inside, but it's gonna look good. Is our puck. We're going to take this uh, as is. It's not great, so we're going to take it to the sander and clean up that little ridge, smooth it out a little bit, and then we're ready to put it to work. There we go. So first off, I'm going to take that center point that I marked out earlier, and I'm going to take an awl and just Kind of make a bit of a guide hole there. Because this is hardwood and we need a screw to hold our template in place, we're going to drill a pilot hole. And the hole that goes through our donut is, is really big. So I use a screw that has, instead of being flat like a, a regular pocket hole screw, I want one that has a cone at the end to kind of get a hold of that and hold our puck in place. That's pretty good. So now that we have this in place, I'm gonna take this back to the bandsaw because that's more than I wanna take off with the router. I just, with the router, really what I'm, I'm aiming for is to just clean this up and get it to match our little circle here. Okay, so with the template um, screwed on there, I went ahead and traced the actual size circle. Next, I'm gonna trace like some uh, transition lines and then we'll hit the bandsaw. That looks a lot better. So what I'll do is flip this over because that's my bit. Bearings are on the bottom and I want them to follow this. Somewhere in here is where I'll start the cut. Go all the way around and then somewhere around here is where I'll end the cut and then I'll sand this to transition that. This is a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit, and I've just got it clamped in place so it doesn't move.
it is all roughed out. It gives you a pretty good idea of how the handle is, is going to turn out. So next what I'm going to do, uh, I need to look for my rasps so that I can clean up this transition. And then we've got a lot of sanding, both power and by hand. I've changed my mind. So the handle is looking pretty good. I've still got a lot of sanding to do. I need to find my rasps and kind of fare these curves together. But the overall shape down here, uh, I kind of hate it. So I've kind of sketched out a, a different shape. It's a little more rectangular. I think we're headed back to the bandsaw and we're just gonna lop all of that off. It's how it goes sometimes. So I'm liking this a lot better. I took it to the bandsaw, cut out those curves, um, took it to back to the belt sander to clean up the edges and then hit it with the router. So now I've just got a whole lot of sanding to do. Got a little bit of tear out here I need to sand out and just a little bit of a ridge left from the router, but that's so small that that's going to sand out easy. So now I've got a damp rag, and this is just to raise the grain. I like to do this with cutting boards and charcuterie boards because at some point they're going to get water on them. Um, whether that's from whatever food is on them or when they're being cleaned. And if you don't, raise the grain beforehand, uh, a lot of times that can happen when the board gets washed. And at that point it's already got finish on it and it's with the, the customer, the recipient, whoever ends up with the board. And so you just, you end up with a nicer end product if you do this. Everything is sanded through 220 at this point. So once this water dries, I'm going to try to hit it with 320 or 400. I'll have to see what I have. And all I'm trying to do with that last bit of sanding is just knock down the fuzz that this process is going to bring out. And I can feel it already. Let that sit for a few minutes while I look for the sandpaper. All right, I found the 320. I've got my sander on its lowest speed. I'm gonna take that same pad and just go along with the edges now. favorite part. I'm just using some General Finishes uh, wood salad bowl finish. I just, I like the, I like the look it gives the wood. It's food safe once fully cured and it's just Really easy to apply. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Let that coat sit and dry for a few hours. We'll come back, we'll rinse, repeat. Usually I go for three, maybe four coats. And once it's all cured, 
I usually hit it with some wax. That's what I call my board butter. Okay, I've just put on the last coat, but I'm I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. Generally, I'm not I'm not happy with really anything that I make, but this I'm pretty happy with so far. The the glue joint is just perfect. Um, the finish has gone on well. The the sanding went well. Like this has just all around been. I'm I'm really happy with it. The handle turned out great, so. Pretty happy with that. And they're not, as, as you've seen, they're not super hard to build, um, but they do take a while just with all the, the sanding that's involved in, in fairing these curves and, and getting everything to just blend nicely. So I guess you could say it's a little labor intensive, but I think it's worth it for the, the end product. So the last step I did, I forgot to film, uh, but I'll explain it real quick, it's nothing fancy. So this is what I call my board butter. Um, this particular blend is mineral oil, carnauba wax, lemon oil, and orange oil. The lemon and orange oil just there to give it a little bit better scent. On the charcuterie board, especially where it's already got some of the bowl finish on it, it probably doesn't make a big difference. Um, I do think it helps to, I don't know, kind of slightly bring down the sheen just a little bit maybe. I think it does the touch, it does give it a, a little bit warmer of a touch. When I do cutting boards that are actually, you know, meant to see knife action, I, whenever I sell a board, I include a can of that with it. Um, this one, I'll, the charcuterie boards I do as well, I just have, it's just in a, a smaller tin because, well, the boards don't need as much. Anyway, I, I rub the, a thin coat on both sides. I, when I'm putting it on, it's usually just kind of a circular motion, a, a wax on, wax off kind of thing. I've let it sit for, I don't know, it's been about an hour, two hours maybe. So now I'm just gonna buff it out. I'm gonna start on the underside and I've just got a old t-shirt and I'm just gonna try to buff that until it has kind of an even appearance. You don't see the, the swirls anymore. Now, one thing to keep in mind in doing this, uh, you are gonna see fingerprints usually, uh, at least with the, the wax that I use. But I, I'm okay with that. And there we go. I think that's, I'm gonna call that done. I'm ready to, to deliver. So there we go. That is how I make my uh, hoop handled charcuterie boards. Not that they're not that difficult to make. Uh, there is some time involved, as there is with any project that's worth doing. So give it a shot sometime. They're, I think they make great gifts, and you know, with Christmas coming up, it's it's a an idea that that really doesn't use a lot of wood. You don't have to do the way I did, where you go through all this trouble to to glue up multiple pieces. You don't have to have a drum sander to do it. I just, I have one, so I use it every chance I get. So there you go. If you like this, maybe hit that like button. If you don't, thumbs down it. I don't care. Uh, if you want to see more of the stuff that I make in my shop, this huge mess, this is actually, there's multiple projects going on at the same time. Beyond the fact that my shop is always a mess, there's actually a reason that it's a mess this time. Someday, this will be clean but it is not this day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And if you have a Maverick in your area, Maverick's the best. Oh, one other thing. I think it's a good idea when you give these as gifts to include some sort of little instruction pamphlet that in bold says, don't put this through the dishwasher. Even though I use waterproof glue and it's got a few coats of finish, it's just, you don't want it to go through a dishwasher. Lightly, you know, wet rag, wipe it off, let it dry. Don't put it in the dishwasher. And make sure whoever you're giving it to knows that, because it would be really sad if you go through and put all the hours of effort that it takes to make one of these. You put all that time and, and energy in, and then to have them ruin it because they didn't know.